momentum. Before we get into Newton's second law of motion, which basically gives how we measure the force, we need to understand a term or a quantity created by Newton called momentum. Let's see what it basically means. Momentum basically gives us the effects of mass and velocity on motion. From first law, we understood that the unbalanced external forces acting on an object creates a change in velocity. Creates a change in velocity by which it can even create acceleration. This acceleration in a way is related to force. So if you take a car, if the change in velocity is higher, if the speed is higher, if speed is increasing, then the acceleration increases. So which needs a better, higher force. And how do we measure this force? This is what we basically understand from second law. But before that, let us understand motion. Let us take a table tennis for an example. And two players are playing. When the table tennis ball goes and hits the other player during the play, it doesn't hurt. Take for example, a cricket game. Two people are playing the cricket and it goes and hits a fielder and it hurts the fielder. This is a cricket ball. And say this cricket ball, let's say this is the boundary and the ball crosses the boundary, then it becomes six runs. And if it is pushed slowly, then it will be just one or two runs based on the, the force on the ball with the cricket bat. It says higher the acceleration, higher the force. So we understand in this example, higher the acceleration, higher the force. Take for example, a car moving and a person is traveling in the way of the car and hits the person, then it hurts. It may even kill the person based on how fast the car is moving. In the same car, if it is stationary at rest, a person is being touched, it doesn't cause any harm. In the same manner, if you take a gun and a small bullet is going and hitting a person, it hurts or it kills a person, depending on where the bullet hits. Now from all these examples, what we understand is a small bullet with a very low mass still can kill a person because it is going with a jet speed. Whereas a car with a heavy mass but it is at rest, it, it creates no harm to the person who is walking on the road. And the same car, if it is moving, if it is moving with a low velocity, then it can hurt. If it moves with a high speed, then it may kill a person also. So from these examples, we understand that there is an impact produced by an object like cricket ball or a moving car or a bullet fired from the gun. That impact does depend on the mass and velocity of an object. So we understand that impact produced by object depends on mass and velocity of the object. This impact Newton named as momentum. Hence, the momentum is defined as the combination of this mass and velocity, which in equation form Newton has defined as mass into velocity. So, momentum is termed as P is mass m into velocity termed as v and the units for momentum is kg meter 
per second. So the mass is always in kg and velocity in meter per second. And it is a vector quantity as it has magnitude and direction because it is a dependent on velocity. And we also understand that momentum applies only to moving body. If the body is at rest, then the velocity is zero, hence momentum is zero. So P is equal to M into V. So M into zero becomes zero. So we understand the equation for momentum as P is equal to M into V. Now we will see an example on momentum. What is the momentum of a man of mass 75 kg when he walks with a uniform velocity of 2 meter per second? We know the momentum P is given as mass m into velocity v. So, P is equal to m into v where m is 75 kg and v is 2 meter per second. So, P is equal to 75 into 2 which is 150 kg meter per second. See another example. What is the total momentum of the bullet and the gun before firing? The gun and the bullet are at rest. Therefore, the velocity is zero. Momentum P is equal to mass m into v velocity. And whatever the mass is, when velocity is zero, momentum is zero. So, P is equal to zero. 